and we are recording. Welcome, Ian Thompson, to technologyforgood.info. We are thrilled to have you here. And uh, could you tell us who you are uh, and why you and your wife founded Clean Techies and, sure. uh, and what you guys do with this amazing portal that you've created? Well, thanks. Uh, thrilled to be here, honored to be here, outclassed being here. Um, <laughs> but uh, so my wife uh, and I started Clean Techies. So to be fair, I started Clean Techies uh, before we got Jalen involved, and, and, and the idea was, um, I don't really know where to begin, I think maybe who I am and, and how it all felt, fit together. I mean, I grew up in Saudi Arabia as a kid, really saw a lot of the impacts of, of, of how we um, interacted with com- countries uh, based on the energy um, that we wanted from them. Um, and also as a kid, I was given a um, small solar panel that that, that charged my, my Walkman. And that was just, you know, the coolest thing ever. I didn't need to buy batteries. And, you know, when you're a kid, the $3 battery is a pretty significant investment. So I was like, this is great. You know, I got this, I got this thing, it powered my Walkman. I don't have to ask my parents for money anymore. It was, it was pretty sweet. Um, and then, then, you know, I went into the military. I was a Marine logistics officer and, and deployed to Iraq. And, you know, on, on some level, there obviously there was, there was an energy concern that took us there. Um, and then, uh, well, I mean, I studied international relations and foreign policy as an undergrad and, and lifelong crunchy kind of environmentalist. And, and it all seemed to make sense that there were some, there were some pretty cool technologies that were coming out um, that were having an impact on sustainability. And we looked at, you know, how to how to share that information, I think was what the initial point was. And and they're really using the power of networking to bring people that are solving similar problems in the United States with people that are solving similar problems in Europe and and in Asia and say, Hey, you know what? Um, We don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we're doing this. Let's, let's collaborate a little bit. Let's use, you know, this, this phenomenon of globalization and and, and communication to to, to get things um, where we need them to be. And, and, and like many businesses, I mean, the initial idea didn't end up being what it, and ended up uh, um, what we ended up delivering, I think. Um, and and as you know, Ben, but, but for others, I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's a web portal that 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 aggregates a lot of good content, a lot of it original. Um, we have a lot of you know, grad students that are writing, um, kind of developing thought leadership. And and if any of your readers are interested in their grad school or or, or, other, or elsewhere, I mean, that are that are really wanting to to find a place to to kind of ex- you know extemporaneously tell the world about what they're working on or what they care about, well, then I think Clean Techies is a really good place. I mean, yeah. in a lot of ways, we like to think about it as like the Huffington Post of, of Clean Tech. Um, so that's kind of why we did it. And, and I think the reason we did it together and the reason I got Jalen very involved very quickly was because she's a lot smarter than me. And so I said, <laughs> hey, you know, help me out. And she said, I, I'll take this over because you're, you're screwing it all up. And so she started doing it. And, and the marriage... Um, the professional marriage was was then, you know, launched, uh, and so she's great, and she really does um, most of the work. Frankly, um, you know, I think initially I was I was really trying to shape kind of the editorial content and, and who we had um, writing in and and and, and the relationships that I had had professionally that were relevant. But but starting a business isn't easy, you know, and then yeah. so it, it takes a lot of operational um, grit, and she certainly brought that. So that's why the marriage happened. That's great. If she has true grit, not to not to true quote that film. <laughs> true grit. Not to quote the But John Wayne is pretty cool. So absolutely, we, we can just throw John Wayne around just because he's he's cool. <laughs> well, Clean Techies is amazing, and definitely we're going to link to it, uh, Ian. And uh, and thank you for for those um, at Columbia and the larger community, and in general, folks who want to uh, potentially contribute. Definitely, uh, it's a great. As you said, it's a great pub hub uh, for uh, for all of this, uh, you know, to share what people are doing around the world. Yeah. Um, could you tell us anything about uh, your your work as a board member for Grid Alternatives? Sure. I, uh, was was interested to see that on your update. Sure. So, um, yeah, I think in a lot of ways, what I you know the reason I started getting involved in clean energy. Um, from a very practical perspective with national security stuff. And, 
and um, and I was really looking at how to have you know really widespread impact on the adoption of clean energy and clean te- clean energy technologies and sustainability technologies um, from a national security perspective. Right now, you know, getting getting the West to be more self sufficient and and getting um, you know having the broader impact of, of environmental security um, and and all the kind of demographic strife that comes out of you know environmental instability, um, kind of mitigating that somehow. So, um, so that's all thinking about things on huge scale, right? And then at the end of the day, the, the communities that are most marginalized by, by the way we use energy um, are, 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 are low-income communities. Um, you know, uh, the processing plants, uh, the, the, the process um, uh, petrochemicals, right? I mean, these are these are these are bad things. And here in the Bay Area, um, there's a long history of, of Chevron was here, and, and and they had their facilities here, and and the communities that were affected by the um, uh, the well, the emissions of, of these things were were low income communities. And so, the founder of Grid Alternatives thought, well, what what better community to serve with um, clean energy than those that historically have been marginalized by it. Um, and then it goes a step further by, by providing low income homeowners with, 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 with solar, you're, you're essentially displacing a large expense and, and relative to, you know, uh, higher income folks, a, a, a larger percentage of their expenses goes towards, um, energy than it does for others. So if you displace that, then, you know, the ideal is you've got more money to work on, you know, education, investments in your household, um, better food, that sort of thing. So my work with GRID has been primarily around uh, helping helping develop um, our market. I mean, it, it turns out that it's really hard to give away free solar um, because people that have no idea what solar is but don't really understand how to, how to interact with it, right? Um, so there's a big education piece. Um, alongside of it, there's a big, you know, efficiency piece, you know, I, how you can also maximize the, um, uh, you know, your basket of goods by, by being more efficient with your, your, your existing energy use. Um, and so I help on development. So helping, helping raise money so we can actually pay for these systems. That's great. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a great story and a great effort to your point. And there's a lot, it's not as simple as, um, just here, here, uh, chart, start using, uh, start using the sun to get energy. There's, there's a lot of other, um, areas to it that you have to work on to your point. The education piece is a really good point and, um, and operationalizing everything and, and, but a great, a very important effort. And, and, um, definitely we're going to send people to take a look at that, uh, that site as well. Um, it's continuing on. So you you're involved in, in all good technologies, uh, in my opinion. If you could create a new technology separate of um, clean techies and of the work you're doing um, with grid alternatives, and uh, one that doesn't exist necessarily today, um, or a problem that exists today that you could use technology to to solve uh, that problem, etc. What what would uh, that be? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, all, all technology really is, I think, is, is, is like how to get more utils out of your existing stuff, right? And, and, and to a large extent, we're able to do, there's a lot of examples of, of technology or clean energy technology or clean tech that, that, is, that is facilitating business models, right? If not anything else, right? Think Zipcar, right? You're, you're facilitating the, you know, the utilization of, of shared assets in that case. Um, yeah. And um, I think the, the most impactful technologies for developing using stuff that we already have, specifically the wind and the sun and, and, and geothermal resources and things like that is, is a grid that is much more efficient. Um, and so there's no particular technology because all these things have to happen kind of in concert, but, um, you know, our grid is terribly inefficient at, at delivering power from the point of generation. So if you can, if you can really provide, generate power, uh, generate that electricity and transport it much more efficiently, that's great. You know, that's, that's, that's electricity saved, frankly. Um, so in concert with that, if you can create also an energy storage system, 
um, that facilitates the use of intermittent resources. Intermittent resources would be like wind and solar that you know produce power only when there's sun out or there's wind blowing. Um, if you can capture that when it's being produced and not necessarily needed by the grid, um, and then dispatch it or provide it for uh, on demand, let's say, that is um, incredibly empowering and, and really facilitates the use of of these technologies. So. Um, to the extent of, of, of where what I would like to develop, I'd like to develop really a, a an incredibly efficient and uh, grid that that also integrates the ability to dispatch um, electricity when it's produced, you know, uh, sustainably or, or, or through renewable resources. Uh, that's great. Uh, I'm going to send you. I was like, I was working on that while you were talking. I'm going to send you. There's a great article from Mashable about how social media will make the smart energy grid more efficient, or could. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a, it was a week or two ago. Um, but you also this 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 woman Lara Galinsky, who I interviewed on Friday from Echoing Green, she mentioned uh, um, clean tech and and energy. You know, her her desire was in a similar space as you. Um, for uh, you know, making our energy more efficient and how inefficient it is right now at the highest level. Sure. Um, so good. Well, there's lots of work to be done. <laughs> sure. um, so there's last, last, there's a lot of people that want to do it now. You yeah. know, and through social networking and such, like people are able to to kind of reach out and, and, and touch each other and realize, oh, wow, you know, I'm not the only person that thinks this is ridiculous that, you know, uh, showers, you know, consume this much water, right? I mean, let's, let's work on a way not only to figure out a way to, to, to mitigate that flow of water, but also operationally get the little water flow um, modulator into everybody's home, right? Yeah. And that's what you, you're like, well, shit, I mean, excuse me, shoot, um, I developed the... Uh, you know, I developed this technology, but you know, I don't, I don't know anything about how to, you know, get it in there. And then, you know, you, you meet somebody that has policy experience and can actually help you develop the policy in order to do that. And that's, you know, that's that's where you know there's there's real power because, you know, no no two people can do everything, right? So you, the, the power of the network is is pretty strong. No, I agree with you. And to your point, and then you, how do you convince uh, back to a great alternative? How do you convince the world to, to shift behavior when? It's uh, it's different, and I mean, you know, they're, 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 all those communications challenges come next, uh, which is which is fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's a little bit of time. I'll just jump into the importance of financing as well, yeah. right? And, and financing is something that you know also takes that same amount of creativity. And the beauty of of clean energy and clean technology and sustainability is it's so multidisciplinary. In, in terms of things that you're going to need to actually make things happen, and and financing is a key one. I mean, we're talking about large capital expenses. That, that somehow have to be incorporated into an operating expense model, you know, some sort of leasing model or something like that. So that, you know, as a homeowner, as a business, you're not, you're not looking at a you know, $5 million investment. You look at it as a $150 a month investment, which is much more palatable. Yep. Um, well, so continuing on, is uh, last question is sort of till twofold. Is there another... Then, organization or person or or both um, that you think I should uh, we should share with technology for good members viewers or someone I could potentially interview um, yeah either or, uh, or yeah both. no I, I I saw you um, were gonna ask me that and and I and I thought you know there is there is so much you know um, and I, I think that there is I'd like to focus on policy, right? Um, and and I'd like to put you in touch with some folks that that, that have real understanding of, of of the policy implications of of of, of getting these things t- to market. Um, so the person I'm going to put you in touch with is a guy named Sanjay Wagla, and he's currently at the Department of Energy, and he works for an organization called ARPA E, which is kind of like DARPA in terms of advanced research projects for for the Defense Department, but on energy, so they're looking at you know forward energy markets. But he's working um, for the administration within the Department of Energy to figure out ways to actually create intelligent policy that that can look you know beyond the myopic scope of you know a, a legislator that needs to get uh, uh, reelected, right? Or even a board member on a for-profit company that has a quarterly report. That's great. That's. Uh... 
that's he sounds amazing and uh, and obviously in, a, in, a, in an important role. And I'm glad you mentioned policy because I think a lot of people, um, you know, they we get enamored by different technology that exists or ooh that's so cool. You know, back to the incubator, amazingly powerful thing. And then we get enamored by oh wow like Facebook uh, transformed um, you know Egypt and Libya. But I, I think policy isn't necessarily sexy, as you. But but to your point, it, it's essential to actually driving something um, long term and, and not just uh, something that's going to sort of come and go or, or, or make a headline and be uh, you know a hot news item for the week. Um, so I'm glad you you're the first person to steer me uh, to a policy uh, person. I'm glad I'm glad to have them um, on the radar. Cool. Well, I'm glad I could uh, kind of shine a light on somebody much smarter than me. So uh, <laughs> it's not very hard, by the way, for me. But uh, yeah, this, one, this one might be helpful for you as well. Well, thank you, Ian, and, and thank you for your time. And definitely tell your wife as well. You said she's uh, she got a shout out, uh, and we we thank her. <laughs> she, she deserves more than a shout out. Jalen uh, deserves everything. I mean, I. I I don't know what I'd wear today if it wasn't for Jalen. So clean techies exist because of Jalen. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect. I will. I will link. I'm going to quote you on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Done. Done. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in April. And uh, if, when you come to New York, and definitely everyone, we're going to we're going to link to all of the good work you're you're uh, involved with. So uh, continue, continue forth. All right, man. Take care. Great to see you.